Hava, Nucky, La Hava, Nucky. Well, hey there. How are you getting along today? Are you dealing okay with world events, politics, weather, life? It could seem pretty depressing, hopeless even. Then again, Welcome to Iron to Iron. Today we're talking about... You and I have the Simca, 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 Simca down in our heart. What? Sorry, <laughs> what are you sorry for the musical uh, disaster there, but Simca. Disaster. Do you, do, you, do, you, Simca. do you recognize the song, the tune? I do. I do recognize the tune. And I've got the... So, what? Joy. Joy. Simka. Joy, joy, down joy, in my joy, heart. joy. <laughs> Count it as so, all joy. Well, Simka. So that's Hebrew you're talking. That is Hebrew. For those. Okay. Yep. All right. So that's our topic for today. That is our topic for today. Joy in a world where it's hard to see joy on the news, in the paper, you name it. Well, that's Here we because are talking about. non joy sells. You say it that way. That's true. It, it, fear. Yeah. You know, panic. You know, it it gets people like, what's going on? And mm-hmm. we want to see it, you know. And you don't want to see it, but, you know, it's like a train wreck. You can't help but look at it type of thing. Matter of fact, it's so funny. Well, it's not funny. Forgive me. But on Angela's way home, she was at a Bible study today. And on their way home, we had a small airport not too far from where we live. Mm-hmm. Plane crash. They mm. saw the plane crash. It was a small, probably four or six seater. But she goes... She's just looking at it. She's like, I'm probably never going to see this again in my entire life. Never seen, you know, right there. I mean, she was literally like 100 feet from it, you know. And it's like, it's something you hate to see. You're going, oh, my gosh, hoping for no one got hurt. But you're looking at like, how did this happen and all these things. So, again, the whole point is you don't want it, but you can't help but look at it type thing. So that is that built into us or is that something we've acquired throughout the generations? That is a great question. I, I don't know. I don't I'm know seriously... Either. Yeah, You know, I, that's something I, I think because of the news, I, I, I was a teenager in the eighties and even so growing up, you always are a, the evening news, the afternoon mm-hmm. news, whatever you, you just, we want to know what's going on in the world, good or bad, you know, but it's the bad that's because you don't see the bad around you. It always happens to somebody else. Right. Yeah. So that's why you want to see what's going on. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here. Well, you know, we're attracted to <clears throat> wars. Oh, they're horrific, but, but we watch. Yeah. You know? Right. I mean, all the World War II movies and exactly. war, movies, you know, it's like it's all about war. You want to see it, you know? Mm-hmm. We or, call or them action take, movies. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so take that to um, like horror movies. I don't watch them. I don't like them. Yeah, I can't, them. I, I can't do horror flicks, man. Why That's are people me. attracted? What is it? Because that all seems to be the opposite of joy. Yeah. That's true. I don't have an answer on that. We're supposed to have answers for people who are going, I don't know, get this. <laughs> well, but we know the one who does. Right? <clears throat> Amen to that. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay. So we've done a great job of describing kind of the current settings. Hasn't this always been the case, though, as far as humanity? I mean, go back, I don't know, go back a few years. There's two people. They're walking through this really cool garden, and one of them, you know, says, hey, sure, I'll, I'll do the thing I'm not supposed to do. And <laughs> my sense of it is the guy is standing there going, wow, fascinating, just like with wars. Right. Instead of stop, stop, right. everybody, let's not do this. Mm-hmm. And of course, yep. we're talking about Rashid or Genesis in the garden. Right, right. Well, and, and that is what brought the non-joy to their life. It brought yes. havoc. It brought pain. It brought, you know, you name it. The curse mm. by following the way of not walking in obedience, which brings to me the joy, you know, of his joy, should say, Steve. which is the ultimate joy. Steve, are you saying Torah is joy? <laughs> I'm, that's exactly what I'm saying. No way. <laughs> okay, so in studying for this a little bit, you know, I went back 
and watched Nadia's uh, teaching, our Four Children by Children series teaching. Oh, she did yeah. a teaching her joy back in the day when she was still young and doing the, the teachings. And it's a great little teaching, about five minutes long if you haven't seen it. But in it, it basically shows how joy is a choice, bottom line. Mm. We can choose to be joyful in everything, you know. And it was so funny because I forgot what was happening in the kitchen the other night and something was said and then <laughs> um, Levi says, oh, God, it's so good. I go, wait a minute, he's good. For other reason. He goes, yeah, yeah, I know, but this is still good <laughs> type situation. So the whole point is like, though, he's good whether things are going bad. He's good whether things are going good. Great. Mm -hmm. He's always good. He's always and good. And he is. And so we just need to remember that that same principle of us choosing joy okay. is always there. In the midst of hard times, good times, it's a choice. And I know that's easier said than done. I mean, I know. Okay. But it's an option that we have to choose. And yes. I'll never forget. I know I'm doing a lot of talking. For, I'll shut up here in a second. But there's... Back in the day, long before, I was still a kid and didn't know anything about Torah, but my dad was, he, he loved studying the scriptures. And we had someone come over our house, I forget who it even was, maybe a neighbor or whatever, and mm -hmm. something was not going good and for them. And then my dad says, well, praise the Lord. And they stopped to go, what? Are you going to praise the Lord for something bad? He goes, no, no, no. We praise him despite what's going on because he's always worthy of our praise. And then they go, okay, you got me like that. You know, it's like, but the whole point is it's a choice. Mm -hmm. We choose to praise him. We choose to be joyful. Yeah, We choose what we are going to do. You can choose to panic. You can choose to live in fear. We, it's, it's all a choice. Sure. Now, granted, the world is like what you just said, the, the media, when you name it, it's always getting us to fear. To live in fear, to live in panic, to live in, you know, what's going to happen next. When we should be living in joy, peace, all of it, because we know who's in charge. Yes, we don't know what's going to happen, but we know who's in charge of what's happening. You know, or at least he, he's at least allowing things. Right. So, but he's, the bottom line is he is in charge, you know. Mm -hmm. Do we trust him in that? You so know what? I, back to the thing is choice. With that, with that, well, no, I'm sorry. What that re, uh, reminds me of is... A book that I've listened to, I think I'm on my fourth or fifth go around, and I'm just going to give the title because it's amazing and everybody should listen to it, in my opinion. But it's Have a Little Faith by Rich Mitch Album. He's written all sorts of great books, really a super writer, and it's about his journey in faith. Hmm. Um, and I'll just leave it at that so there's no spoiler alerts. But one of the points is his rabbi at one point shares a story. And the story goes something like this. So I, I'll probably butcher it. But um, we're going to pick um, uh, mm, some place in from the northern steppes of China, the Mongols. Or, you know, you're living out in the middle of nowhere. And it's a little town. And this is back in the day. And there's a poor family. And, and the, uh, the neighbors notice that the um, farmer's horse is, is broke is limping out in the field and they say oh looks like your horse is broken its leg that's too bad and the farmer says maybe and later that day uh they come you know people come to to conscript animals into the army and they say oh your army your your horse won't be able to go and join in the in the wonderful story and you know winning the that's too bad so well, maybe and, you know, it goes on like this about a son. And the point of it is, you just don't know what's going to happen or how Yah's going to use those circumstances. And, and I'll share, if you yep. don't mind, one more quick, and this is directly my own thing. Uh, in fact, it was one of the trips about two and a half years ago we made down uh, around the United States. And we were down in your neck of the woods. Just before we drove down, I don't know if you remember, but we had a flat tire on the trailer. And it was just going into Rev Shabbat. And uh, Stan was there, Stan Presley. And so yeah. Stan and I were looking at it. It's like, oh, he says, well, you know, we can try to change it. It's all right, let's go for it. And as we're taking the tire off, I said, Father, thank you. He just kind of looked at me. And we get the tire off. And, okay, we're going to change it. This is great. No big deal. Well, as we're taking the tire off, I notice that the, the uh, hub 
is loose. So, thank you, Abba. Well, what'd you find, Gus? Well, it's, it's loose and it shouldn't be. In fact, the cap, the grease cap fell off in my hands. Oh, man. Yeah, that's not good. Mm -mm. So, <laughs> praise Yahweh. So, I took that off. I'm going to try to figure out how to get it back on there. I wiggle the actual wheel and it moves. My bearings are going out. Had that tire not been flat, I wouldn't have known it. And just briefly, the rest of the story is we made it down to your place. There just happened to be a, the perfect place to fix it. A couple days later, that was able to get it in close to you. I mean, that that's all Yahweh thing. And I could have been upset and mad. We could have griped and moaned. But we had joy in that moment. Now, I can't say I do it all the time. I want to. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? We always, we always give the good examples that we do, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's good. So, joy. You yeah. know, when we think of, there's a verse, and I'm going to read it for us here, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1, 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him, and you rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, mm. obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And this is, you know, the joy unspeakable and full of glory from, I think King James says it that way, in multiple different versions. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that singing that song like that back in the day when I was a kid growing up in the Assembly of God Church. And mm. it was just a, a song. And I never even knew as a kid that was a verse. You know, oh, and, yeah. then I, and then I was, and then I'm read and going, hey, that's a song. No, it was the first verse, it was our first verse, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> type thing. But the whole element of living in obedience to Him brings that joy, and it's filled with glory. Yes, we are going to go through. I mean, let's think for a second here. This is, you know, Peter talking. One of the disciples, dude. They went through some hard times. They lived hard times, mm -hmm. but yet they knew what the joy of the Lord was. Man, read yeah. the life of Paul. Paul went mm. through so many things. Mm. I mean, so much. But yet, and even in, in prison, I think, what book is it from? I forgot now. He goes, you know, rejoice. I say it again, rejoice. He's saying that to the people who, he's in prison. And he's saying it to them out there, mm -hmm. rejoice. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a choice, uh, and I'm not saying it's an easy choice, but it's a choice that will always work to our betterment if we go that route. Mm -hmm. So are, are you talking about being happy, Steve? <clears throat> uh, there's a difference between happy and joy. In oh. fact, Nadia, Nadia's teaching even discusses this. Uh, it's a great example. As I was watching, I was going, oh, that's so good. <laughs> and think of a massive ship, okay, and the ship hits a three-foot wave. What's the wave do to the ship? Nothing. But take a small little boat, a boat that can go much faster than that big, big ship, mind you. Mm -hmm. Okay, it can move all around. But if it hits that three-foot wave, it's going to feel that three-foot wave. And that's the difference between joy and happiness. Joy is something that is more solid, stable, and secure along the way. Happiness can come and go. It's faster. It can it can slow down really quick too. But when it hits that wave, it's going to feel it and it'll slow it down big time. So joy is something, in my opinion, is something that is more foundational, more solid. Yes, you can go through them hard times, but the joy is always going to be there. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? That's my, that's my understanding of it. No, I like that. I was headed down the path of Happiness is external, joy is internal. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Because, you know, I, I got a, a new car. I'm happy until that car gets a little bit older. And, <laughs> right. You know, I'm happy because it's sunny, but guess what? Tomorrow it rains. Right, right. There's joy no matter what's happening. Like Paul, you know, hey, I consider it all joy. What? Yeah, when you have trials. What? Because trials and joys, joys are linked. Mm -hmm. We can get through the trials if we have that internal joy. Well, and I just saw something here not too long ago. You said, when your joy is founded on something out of this earth, your joy can never be taken away. 
Say so in other words, when your joy is not founded in something on this earth, your joy can never be taken away. Amen. Where our joy is founded in his word. You mm-hmm. can't take the word away, period. Mm-hmm. And again, doesn't mean you're not going to go through hard times. Doesn't mean you're not yeah. going to go, I mean, you know, yes, but the joy, holding on to him. Okay, you used the word good earlier too. Okay. So are good and joy connected? Can be, but good and bad, uh, joy and bad can be connected just the same. Look at the life of Job, all the bad things he held on, he, you know, he struggled and went through. Now, he went through some hard times, but in the end, his joy was twofold of what happened through it all. Does that make sense? It so does. It, to me, to me, joy and good is not always going to be connected. Joy can be, look at what you just said earlier, what happened to you. You had to go through the flat tire, but because of what you saw, it solidified your joy all the more, knowing the always in control. Through what? Something that bad happened. I mean, if we got all the good that we wanted, it would not be good. Okay. Um, Think of it, I mean, seriously, how many times have I prayed for something good that I viewed good in my life? And then, but yet Yahweh said, uh, no. How many times have we said as to our children as parents, mm-hmm. you know, I want this. Uh, no, you can't have all that candy. You'll get sick. No, I won't. Yes, you will. So he says no. So how many times? So yeah, I think it bad in our view, joy can be connected. It's, it's what we, it's all depends upon what we view bad. That's exactly right. What is the right answer to every question ever asked in all of humanity? Always the right answer. Jesus? <laughs> they always say Jesus is the answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> it depends. What? It depends is the answer. Yes. Right? Yeah, it depends. Right. So let's look at the word good and joy together. When the okay. rich young ruler comes to Yeshua in Matthew and says, good teacher. And if Yeshua says, of course, Yes, I am good. Thank you very much. In fact, I'm the epitome of good. No, what's he do? No. He stops him dead in his tracks. Wait, Why do you good. call me good? And he is the epitome of good in our eyes, right? Right. And he says there's only one that's good, and that's a father. That's Elohim. So right. if that's the case, and there's only one that's good, I'm just going to get real nitpicky or granular on this good word, isn't then joy only from the Father. He defines what joy is. If right. he's good and joy. So looking at it from that perspective, I might think the two are the same as long as they um, come from him. As long as we know we're pointing towards that joy and that goodness. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we're looking at goodness more like happy. Hey, right. my tire's flat. I'm not happy. Oh. Right. But that's okay. I can be unhappy and still joyful. Mm-hmm. Yep. Despite the circumstances. Despite the circumstances. You know, you brought up First Peter, and there was one I wanted to bring up that I thought was interesting. Uh, it's in Breshit or Genesis 31, 27. Why did you flee secretly and deceive me and not inform me? And I would have sent you away with joy and songs, with tambourine and lyre. And what verse are you in? I'm in Genesis 31, 27. Oh, 27. I'm in verse 7. I'm going, where is he at? Okay. <laughs> well, you may look at 27 and still wonder, where am I at? <laughs> um, okay. So here's here's Laban, who's been basically yanking Yaakov around. Oh, mm-hmm. you get Leah. You don't live Raquel. Oh, you got to stay another seven years. Oh, the spotted shape. You know, oh, you know, there's all this stuff going on. This guy doesn't seem to be like the best character in the book as far as morality and ethics, right? Seems to be a little shady here and there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you set talking about sending him away with joy. Right. Does it seem like a little bit of a disparity of use or intent there? That's the first place joy shows up that I've found in the Bible. Okay. Well, it definitely seems manipulative, that's for sure. Yeah. On his side. Mm-hmm. But true joy, once again, wouldn't be manipulative. No. Not at all. And so that I think there's more depth to that than we're going to have time for today, but that would be a fascinating study to dig into that right. within context and find out, okay, what's really going on here with that word? 
Yep. And who's using Man. them? Man. Yeah. Well, and when someone promises you joy, use caution. Hmm. You know, because hmm. only Yahweh gives joy. Hallelujah. Yeah, and really, you know, and and I think it's important. This is something I've been working on for a, a, a teaching series I want to do with Angela eventually, and and it's the whole point is don't find joy in anyone else but Yahweh, mm. because if you seek joy in someone, Yahweh may remove that someone from your life. Then what? Mm. Or what if that what if that person lets you down? Mm-hmm. What's up? What then? What happens? Your joy should only be founded in him and him alone. He's the only one who will never let us down. Yeah. You know, period. Huh. That's uh that's idolatry. Yeah. Good point. Yep. So misplaced. I mean, it's hard, it's joy. hard to imagine that because you're not you're not bowing down to him, but you're placing someone else above Yahweh. Yep. In your in in your eyes, and then that's 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 idolatry, like you just said. Hmm. Well, that reminds me of, of, once again, Torah. Reminds me of commands. Mm-hmm. And did you know, if you go to a Devarim or Deuteronomy 28, this is the blessing and curses section, right? Yep. And you can scroll down, oh, through the, you know, here are the carcasses for the birds. Oh, this is awful stuff. Here's what's going on. And you get down to verse 47. Because you did not serve Yahweh your Elohim with joy and gladness of heart and for all the plenty. And it goes on about more curses. And this is why you're getting all this bad stuff. We're not supposed to just be obedient. We're supposed to be obedient in joy. You know, Steve, you asked me to, I don't know, edit a video. I said, yeah, I'll edit it. Okay. (laughs) Would you feel good about that? Right. No, not at all. Right. Let me have somebody else do it or I'll do it myself. Right. 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 But no matter what's going on, you know, I just as I backed over, as I backed out of the driveway, I ran over the neighbor's cat. It was raining and I went out and I got soaked. (laughs) But once I get into the room, hey, you know what? That's all sad stuff that all makes me unhappy. But Mm -hmm. praise Yahweh. Here I am. Right. Use me. Right. So joyful obedience See, and that goes into a verse I've got here in Hebrews 12, 2. It says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm. So the joy was sitting next to the Father off in the distance. Uh Uh-huh. Be looking at that joy, he endured the cross that was stood between him and that point. Mm. And that's what we have to do. You know, we have to realize that there's a joy in this walk that he has given us. It may not be happy. It may not be what we want all at all times, but it's always going to be what he wants for us. There you go. Make sense? Yeah. Even though we may not know the reason, we may think it's you know, horrible, awful, whatever. We, we yep. don't know his, his ways are so much higher than ours. Oh man. On this side of heaven, we may, or, if it, or eternity that is, it's like, we may never know what he has in plan yeah. for this or for that, or, or you name it. But it's not like we have to know. Do you trust him? Yes. Then go. Do what he tells you to do. Hmm. That makes me think of, you said eternity. So now we're in eternity, and this this may take us off on a slight bunny trail, but we're in okay. eternity. Does that mean now we know what he has for us? Remember, we got all of eternity to hang out with him. Oh, I don't think so. I think there's still that mystery. There has got to be in my humanness. Okay, I have a I have a thought on that. Okay, you know where it says where um, I think it's Isaiah, and he sees all the creatures yeah. uh, around the throne, constantly saying, holy, holy, mm-hmm. holy. You know, like they're, they're constantly, something happens, it's holy, 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 constantly right. doing it. I have a theory on that. Okay. I think it's because 
Yahweh is constantly revealing himself in a different perspective. And then they go, oh my gosh, holy, holy, holy. And all of a sudden they're done praising for a little, a couple hundred years, whatever, you know, and all of a sudden they go, oh yeah, this is about me too. Oh my gosh, holy, holy. It's like, we'll be doing that through all eternity because there's always going to be something about him that he's going to open up and reveal to us. And that's my current thought, you know. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm tracking with that. So, you know, if we could... Let's consider the six questions of journalism, which we've done sometime else in one of our other conversations. But let's yes. go through this with joy. Because it. it strikes me that we've got to have something that, that is practical in, in application here. Because I'd want to hear that if I was listening into a conversation. And I want to be able to take something away. And I always do, Steve. You know, praise you always. <laughs> it's just always Same great. Here. Um, so how do you get joy? Okay. Well, again, I think joy is founded in Torah. Okay. In fact, I have a verse here. Hmm. John fifteen nine, And it says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now, remain in my love. And that says this, verse 10. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So how do we have complete joy? By walking in obedience to the commands of Yahweh. That's why he even told them. It's right there. It's right there in plain language for us to see. (laughs) <laughs> Why didn't we just start with this? This could have been we a two-minute conversation. Have. Let's let's start over. <laughs> yeah, scratch the erase. <laughs> okay, so then uh, the next question would be: Why should you have joy? Well, no, you have an answer for that. Yeah. Okay. I want your I want your answer. Okay, it goes back to our raising kids for those that have raised kids, they ask a lot of questions, don't they? Why? Why? Hey, it's uh, time to go to school. Why? Why? Because you got to (laughs) learn. Why? Because you got to get a job someday. (laughs) Why? And then I, as many people did, at some point, even if it was just once, we get so tired of the whys, we say, because I said so. That's it. (laughs) (sighs) And we quit asking why. Yep. So I would say... Because Yahweh said so. Yeah. There's, it doesn't need to be big. The how is very technical. It's the mechanics. The why? Mm-hmm. Because he said so. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean I'm not going to, I'm going to stop asking why, because he's built inquisitive natures into us. But I want to creatively ask that question and continue to explore in a way that brings me closer to him. Yeah. Amen. Okay. So, yep. Steve, where should we have joy? Everywhere. When should we have joy? All the time. Who, what? Even in the bad times. Okay. And, well, it's pretty easy. Who should have joy? Everybody. Right. Right. In a perfect world, which it isn't. Mm-hmm. Right. Ain't that the truth? Mm. Yeah. It reminds me of, um, what? what's the verse? Many are called, few are chosen. I don't remember where that is, the address, but. Yeah, I can't remember at the moment either. It's in several spots, if I'm not mistaken, though. Yeah. So who, what, where, when, how, and why? I, I think we've covered hmm. all six, haven't we? Pretty much. Well, either we have or we haven't. Right. We'll find out in the editing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, we only did four. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> so we've kind of gone through, a, uh, this is how we would get there. Summary. You know what would be fun? I think, see if you agree with me, wouldn't it be fun to post like songs of joy? Hava, Nagila, ha. I mean, in there <laughs> is the Nismacha. There's that, that joy, that Simcha. Um, mm-hmm. And Nagila is a joyful gladness. Um, and it can be more uh, current songs as well, but also mm-hmm. uh, verses on joy. So there's, here's a yeah. resource. Because after all, Zehayom Asah, Yahweh, Nagila, Venismacha, Vo. This, 
this is the day Yahweh's made. We will be Amen. glad and rejoice in it. Joy. Simcha. Amen. That's awesome. Because this is the day. This is the and we, day. And we, can, and we should be saying that every day. Yes. In fact, I'm going to take it one step farther as we get ready to close. And my daughter, ah, I tell you, I'm so proud so, for so many reasons. But my daughter, Mallory, uh, a year and two months ago said, hey, Dad, I need to get into the Bible. more. I need some help in Scripture. So how do you want to do that? Let's, let's, uh, I want to go through Psalms. It's all right. Why don't we, we make it a point to text each other a Psalm a day, one verse or multiple verses if they go together. And we decided that the rule was we couldn't copy the other person's. We had to look it up ourselves. And through that, she, um, instead of saying, have a good day or what a great day it is, that's, that's a long time. It's 24 hours, right? Right. And so she changed it to now. Happy now, Dad. And so now we, we do this now, which in Hebrew is atah. So simcha atah, joy now. Don't wait. <laughs> I love it. That's great. <laughs> yeah. You got any uh, closing thoughts or words, brother? You know, I don't. I think we've covered everything so good. I, I had one more thought regarding uh, it's whenever King Solomon was visited by um, the Queen of Sheba. Oh, yeah. And and this is in 1 Kings 10, 8. She says, how happy your men must be, how happy your officials who continually stand before and hear your wisdom. And these are talking about his servants, servants, mm. how happy the servants must be to be in your presence and hear your wisdom. Well, Yeshua is the ultimate wisdom for us, yes. you know. And so it's like how happy we are when we serve him, the joy that would overflow us when we remain faithful in his joy, not pursuing what the world says to do, not pursuing what the, you know, the modern hip thing to do or over here. Right. Forget what the world is saying. Here, get this and you'll be happy. Get this, you'll have joy. Well, we all know it's, yeah, it'll bring happiness, but for what? For how long? And then you got to get the next best thing. And there's the world will always have you pursuing something different other than what Yahweh's joy is, hmm. serving him. So don't serve the world because that's what you're doing. When you're pursuing joy and all these different things, right? you're serving the world. Yeah. Serve him. That's where the ultimate joy comes in, being obedient to him. And he will bring you where you need, what you need, when you need it. Yeah. All in his timing. Yep. Simcha Ata. Simcha Ata. I like it, brother. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. This has been great. As always, it has I got been. things to, to think about going into the next day or next now. <laughs> next now. Amen. Right. I love you, brother. <laughs> love you too, brother. We'll talk to you later. All right. Shalom. Shalom.